See this right here? This is my new friend Huion, and I want to introduce you to him. Let's go! Okay, stop. What's up everybody? My name is Dave Conrad and I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California and today what we're going to talk about is Affinity Brushes. Originally, I had this long intro talking about all kinds of different things, but then I did this long demonstration on my screen and so I decided to recut the intro just because I didn't want to just kill you with all of my yammering. So what we're going to talk about today is me diving into Affinity and how the brush palette works and my limited understanding and we're going to explore. But I also wanted to let you know that one of the things that I bought, you already know that I bought a new computer, I also bought one of these. This is a Huion drawing tablet. I can't remember the actual name, but it's a 16 inch Huion tablet and I love it and it's cool but I'm still getting to know it. I don't really work with it well yet. You'll see that in the video very soon but I just wanted to let you know that this is what I'm going to be working on. I will put a link to it in the description. Yes, it will be an Amazon affiliate link but you don't have to click it if you don't want. Just wanted to let you know what was up. So uh, let's get into the nitty gritty of Affinity Photos brush palette. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I still have to work on my uh, hand lettering work, so ignore all that. Folks, what we are doing here today is we are going to be looking at the brushes palette, or rather the, the tools, the, the, the palette. It's the brush palette. We're looking at this bar all the way across the top. Here we are. I've got the brushes off here to the side so that I can access brushes and colors at the same time, but these are different pens and you know uh, pencils markers all these different brush types these are just the stock ones that come out of affinity just using this first one in the pens thing because it has a really decent amount of flow right it's good amount of flow uh, it's actually now that i think about it it doesn't have quite so i'm going to go to the second one there and it's a little on the thin side just for our purposes so i'm going to go over here to this first part of the palette and just kind of raise that up a little bit right so now i can get so a little bit of a density. Yeah, you know, and now that I think about this, well, I guess it's all right. It, it, you are seeing a little bit of variance there in the weight. I really was more concerned about making sure that you see the density difference here because we're gonna be talking about that a lot. So yeah, so up here, obviously, if you wanna change the width of anything, you just go right up there, change the width like that. You can also do the same thing by hitting the up or don't hit that. You can hit the up bracket and the down bracket and that will also reduce it up and down as necessary. Of course, you can change the opacity. Now, the difference here between opacity and flow, and I found this out because I watched another YouTube video, the difference between this is that opacity, obviously, when I reduce the opacity down, it basically gives me a, a constrained amount of opacity over top itself. So if as long as I don't let go, it will give me the same consistent opacity. Now if I go and do that again, now it'll give me the same. But now it's only building up to a certain amount on top of that. Now I have to go again and again and again to do that. Now the difference there is we bring that back up, go here to flow, bring that down to like 30, let's say, let's just say 50% for the sec sake of uh, this video. We're going to go like this, Ah, see, that didn't really change much. So we're going to go back and we're going to go down even more. So now you can see that the flow is a little bit different, right? But as I start to build it up and build it up without letting go, it will get darker and darker. I'm going to back that off even more so you can really see what I'm talking about here. So if I go here, right, I'm just drawing really lights, coming through really light, coming through really light. But if I sit there and build it up and build it up and build it up, Without letting go, it will just build up. And this is kind of to give the effect of like say a watercolor where you just kind of add a little bit and add a little bit and add a little bit just to kind of deepen the colors as you go. Hardness is pretty much the hardness edge, but this only works on uh, mostly the, the, I don't even think it works on these. I believe the hardness only works on these basic brushes, which is these right here. So if I go here to this brush here, and I have my hardness there, but I re it's 100%, but if I go and reduce it down to zero, then it's, why is that looking like, oh, wet edges. Okay, so uh, I don't know why wet edges was selected, but so you can see, actually let's bump this way up here. 
you guys can really see what I'm talking about. So this is zero hardness, no hardness whatsoever. And then obviously when I go here and do full hardness, it's big and black, but we don't really want that. We're gonna go back here to the pens, go back to this one here. Nope, sometimes it just doesn't take. Sometimes you have to hit that brush again for it to come back. Okay, there we go, perfect. All right, now uh, more is if I want to get into some really crazy details. Now you can adjust the size and I believe that the reason that this has some uh, this is because in the it's constrained to this particular brush when it was uploaded. It's like they want you to pretty much stay in this range. Accumulation, I believe, has to do something with uh, that flow aspects. Hardness, spacing is if I wanted to space this out, like if I wanted to change that like that. If I wanted to maybe make some dotted lines or if I wanted to make a more uh, sketchy pattern, I could do that. Uh, there's the flow right there. So I'm not really 100%. Let's see what accumulation does. Let's see. So if I break that down. Okay, so it's an accumulation is essentially like... It, I think that really is the opacity. Like maybe accumulation is the standard opacity for that particular brush. And I can adjust that as I see fit. The shape... I don't... Will that even change anything? I don't even think that changes. That's maybe... I think that probably relates back to the basic brushes again. And rotation, if I move that, oh look at that. Now I don't even know why that's doing that. I don't know why that's getting bigger and smaller like that. But let's just see what happens. If I bring the rotation down like that. Let's zoom in here so I can kind of, actually let's close this. I'm trying to zoom, there we go. And go back to more I'm gonna pull this off to the side just so I can see what's going on here okay that's the rotation there but go all the way up here I don't really see much difference so I'm not really sure how that uh, goes so I'm gonna go back and reset that just in case now where things get really interesting here is in the dynamics and I'm going to kind of like I'm just gonna breeze through this really quickly so size jitter is gonna be basically the the jitter about how much of a size difference it makes as it brushing because I can do this and it kind of stays all the same size or I could go way up here and the size would be like the as I bring it across it's just going to change sizes as I go right uh, it has nothing to do really with my pressure it's just like what it's going to deliver as I'm doing it close this for a second I get a little crowded on the screen Accumulation jitter, I'm assuming, has to do again with the opacity. The flow jitter is how much flow it gets. If I bring that flow jitter down, it's going to maybe adjust that. And I'm not really seeing it with this particular brush. So maybe it works better in some brushes and not necessarily this one. That's why that one was at full. Rotation jitter, if I wanted to, again, uh, change the rotation of whatever it is. And this would probably... I want to test something here. Let's go back here and change the spacing like this. And now I want to just see something. Okay, see how I'm doing this and that pattern is rotating as I go. If I go back here to the dynamics and I change that rotation jitter way down, if I do this, what should happen is it should stay the same. And it pretty much is staying the same all the way across. It's The brush isn't rotating as I go along, but I have that rotation jitter up way up here and it moves around like that. Let's bring that uh, spacing back down so we get a little bit more. You can't really tell at this when it's this close together, but it's moving to give a little bit of different texture. Now, one thing somebody else showed me is that when you do this, if you change this to direction, I want to go back here and we're going to change that spacing back up there like this. This is going to be, let's change the color. Can I change the color? Okay. So as I do this, Technically, what should happen is that brush should turn as I turn the, the, the brush, as I turn my line. As I turn my line, the brush should rotate accordingly. So I'm doing this way, and now I'm going this way, and is it, I can't quite tell. 
but it looks like it is. This makes more sense when you have a multicolored brush. You can kind of see what's going on. So like let's say part of it was red and part of it was black. You would see the black stay relative to wherever I was doing it. So actually what I'm doing right here doesn't make much sense. But anyway, so we could go deep into that if you wanted to. Maybe I'll discuss that in another time. But you can mess with all of these little things and mess with it. This is a whole other ball of wax that I'm not going to get into. Maybe another time. Uh, sub brushes are if you wanted to kind of have like a secondary kind of feel to things. Again, don't know what's going on there yet. I will discuss that as I learn more right now. It's not in the bag. So we're going to go ahead and hit reset and we're going to close and we're going to clean up this mess. Here's an interesting. Okay, so I have a tablet. I have a tablet. You can see my tablet. And if I do this with this pen and even if I bring it up in size. So this little marker right here basically is telling me or telling my app that I have a tablet if I click it like it is clicked right there. If I have it clicked off, it really like it's getting you're getting some variation based on it. But really, it's more about how fast I like it has nothing to do with the pressure I'm putting on the thing. It's more about how fast I'm moving around. Right. But if I click that, supposedly, if I do this. It gives a better representation of flow, or rather size variation based on the pressure that I'm using. Stabilizer is an interesting one because uh, when it comes to drawing lines, like if I wanted to draw like straight lines around something, like it's not going to be, that's not, that's not a nice easy curve. Like it's not a good smooth curve. I would have to, I mean there's some people that can really do that. They really know how to do that and make it interesting. Now, if I'm just painting one of my abstract oriented designs and stuff like that, that doesn't really matter that much. But for if I'm trying to make circles or at least relatively close, I mean, that's not great. You know, if I look at that, that's like, come on, you know, my hand just doesn't I just don't have the control. No matter how fast I do this, I just don't have really good control. So if I go over here to the stabilizer, I've got a couple of options. Watch this. If I change my dial this down to let's say 30%. Basically what this is is like, it's like a leader. Imagine if I had like a string attached to a pen and as I pulled the string, it followed my string wherever I wanted it to go. Now there's two options here. There's this one, which is rope mode. And then there's this one, which is window mode. I don't know why it's called window mode. I don't know, don't ask, but rope mode is like, so it kind of creates this little line. You see that line? And what it will do as I do this is it will kind of more smoothly follow the path that I'm on. Now, the what we found, and by we, I mean royal we, what I found is that this rope mode is good for more straight-ish lines. Like if I want to create like a, a star pattern or a tiger stripe or whatever you want to call it, it's good for that. It's not perfect, right? It's not perfect straight edge lines, but it's straight enough. It follows it follows pretty smooth. And the more smoother I do it, the better it gets. Now if I go over here to window mode, this one's even more interesting. This one is almost like it's going to follow my path and know where I have been and follow that with it. Does that make sense? I'm going to go here and it's going, no matter what I do, it's going to follow me as opposed to the other one where if I did that, it's like, it's like, see, you get kind of like these little jumps right like that, right? This one does not do that. This one's a lot more smooth. So if you're trying to do like say a filigree on some sort of calligraphy at the bottom, this is really great for that. If I wanted to do that circle, Still not, I'm not, I'm still not a pro, but it's a lot smoother, right? Because I can kind of see. And here's the other thing. If I change this window size, if I increase that length to something substantial, I can kind of follow it along. Like it will follow me for a distance. See how it kind of like, no matter how far I pull out, it's still following me. It's still chasing me the whole time. So it's just something interesting to deal with. And I, again, I'm still experimenting with this stuff. I don't know exactly the best way. I'm not the best at this, but I'm getting there. And I just think it's interesting to let people know what's happening. So uh, symmetry is, of course, if you wanted to draw mutual designs and you can do mirrors, right? You can 
like meaning it's following my exact movement in the, just um, on the other, pla uh, what do you call it, the other hemisphere. I can also go different, uh, different segments. So now I can do like, that's really crowded. So if I wanted to do something like this, it's, now it's important to understand you want to keep it constrained as possible, as much as possible, because if I go like all over here, then it's just going to get messy and dirty and that's not good. So you keep it, in fact, uh, let's go down in size quite a bit. How cool is that? So that's symmetry. We don't really need that right now. Go ahead. Uh, blend mode. It's pretty simple. Boost this sucker up. Bring the size up. So obviously, just like any of the blend modes in your layers here, the blend modes here, you know, like you want to draw something, let's bring our opacity. Well, you don't even need to do that. See, so we have this here. If I got automatically change my mult to multiply, then it's going to create some opacity there. If I do like say screen or color dodge, then it's going to create this little thing happening like that. So you can mess around with that and play with that. Uh, why does wet edges keep coming back? Okay, so here's the thing with wet edges. So let's say we don't have wet edges. We draw a line, it's just a line, we draw a line, it's just a line. But if I bring wet edges in, basically what this is like is like an oversaturated brush and the edge gets more wetter. Now, so the thing about this brush that I'm using right now, this may not be the best brush for this, but if I, the thing about this brush, let me zoom in quite a bit. As you can see, without the wet edges, when I create it, it creates this, let's go down here and let's make this more. It, it creates this kind of soft edge. But the minute I put that wet edge, that's oversaturated on the edge. So if I go back, let's do this. Let's pick a brush that this will show up a little bit better on. And it still shows the wet edges. Okay, so it's, it's not really, it's not showing it very well, but you can kind of see it. Okay, as you can see that right there, that blue, that darker blue ring. So it creates that kind of haloed effect over that. And it just means that like, the edge is a little bit more saturated in color than that, than everything else. And as you kind of go on top of it, it kind of gets rid of that saturation in the middle. I, I don't personally anticipate ever using that, but I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. That's uh, can, entirely up to you. Just let you know that it does exist and you can use it if you want to. Let's just lay some, uh, let's lay some of this down. Oh, I wanna get rid of that because I don't want stabilizer right now. I just wanna paint. I just wanna paint. Uh, we'll go with a hard edge and you know, change the color a little bit and kinda. Okay. If I protect alpha and I wanna come back in here and paint, let's say a yellow on top of this thing, if I protect alpha on my design, then uh, bring up that brush quite a bit. You can kind of see that the alpha is held, meaning I am not painting, no matter how much I paint over here, I am not painting beyond the edge of this design. So that's it. It's basically just locking that item. Uh, I've talked about this one before, where I, what I really would like is if they use that within the layer palette like it used like it is in photoshop where they put protect the alpha it's called something different there but you put it here that way you protect the different layers i honestly prefer that to having this because what what if i jump to a different layer and i didn't want to protect that one but i wanted to protect the one below i have to keep going back and forth back and forth switching 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 so it's it's a minor thing to deal with, but it's not a big deal. Uh, so I won't complain about it too much more than that. And that's pretty much it. Now I did want to bring this up. I forgot to mention this earlier. So I, I imported this image that I got uh, from uh, Unsplash.com. I got this from Unsplash.com. I wanted to bring this up because I think it's interesting. If I wanted to go back here, let's go find that other. Actually, it doesn't really matter. I'll pick any brush. It really doesn't matter at this point. I'm. Just, I just wanted to show you the uh, stabilizer in action. So let's say I wanted to follow this guy's uh, features a little bit. Let's just say I wanted to draw on top of him and I'm gonna go with red just so you can see him a little bit better. So with the stabilizer, I probably don't need that much, but let's say, so, okay, maybe not. 
Why didn't that work? Why? There we go. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, good. You know why? Because I got Protect Alpha on. See what I mean? This is exactly what I'm talking about. I had Protect Alpha on. That's why nothing was happening. Just trying to follow this guy's features like this. Oops. See? Not great. <laughs> I'm not the best at this, it's still, but I can kind of go here and do this little thing. I can make that eyebrow and I can make the eye. This is terrible representation, but uh, you get the point. I just want to see how ridiculous that looks. Abstract art in, in progress right there, folks. Let's go back. Let's try that again. But with the window uh, stabilizer instead, this one should be a little bit more fluid. But let's see. Don't mind the variance there. It is what it is. looks just like him it's spitting image right anyway I just wanted to show you that that's something interesting you could do you don't have to do that you could experiment with that I'm sure it would be more fun uh, if uh, well <laughs> if I was better at it I do think that that's actually kind of hilarious to be honest with you I might actually use that in something just because that's pretty much it that is everything that I know about the brushes so far. Now there's some other aspects to it, like there are the different brush tools. When you hit the B button a couple of different times, you'll see that there's different tools that you can use, and we'll talk about that in another episode, but at least now you know. All of those different settings across the top, you can say, oh, now I know what all of that means. You're welcome. That's it, I'm done for today. I hope this wasn't exorbitantly long, ridiculously long, stupid long as I tend to be. Um, I appreciate you sticking around and I hope you got some value out of it and at the very least, I hope you got entertained. Anyway, if you did any of those things, please make sure you comment below and tell me what you liked most or what you didn't like most or whatever, I don't care. Make sure you hit the thumbs up whether you like it or not, I don't care because I wanna hit the thumbs you like, just hit the thumbs up. Now if you did like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down there and if you did subscribe, already. Ready, but you haven't hit the little bell thing go ahead and hit the bell because you want to hit the bell to make sure you never miss a thing that is gonna do it we're gonna wrap this sucker up folks next time i don't know what i'm talking about now i also wanted to say real quickly that yeah i said last time i'll probably be doing a couple videos a week but this week was a little weird personally i'm not gonna go into it doesn't really matter but i just want to let you know that still thinking about it i should still be doing that just not this week and stuff will happen next week okay thank you very much for checking in i appreciate you guys remember be good today be better tomorrow see ya what is what? 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 What?